In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the Rhino interface and exploring some of the different geometry types needed to create a set of dice. Starting out, we should be working in a particular unit, in this case millimeters, shown here at the bottom. The grid is set up so that each of these squares indicates one millimeter. You can change this by going into the File menu and adjusting the properties under Units and Grid Setup. The regular workflow in Rhino when creating an object is to start out by creating curves defining the basic shapes within the object. Under the Curve menu, we'll access the Rectangle command using Corner to Corner. To be able to draw this precisely, we need to turn on the grid snap modeling aid found here along the bottom. Now we can precisely snap into the point, selecting a corner here and moving across 20 millimeters and down 20 millimeters to create the square. From this curve, we can now create surfaces that will indicate the form. Under the Surface menu, I'll use the command Extrude Curve Straight. All of your commands can be found in these drop-down menus, and they're grouped in different sections. Each of these commands also has a corresponding icon that you can use. Follow the prompts to execute the command. Select the curve and, as prompted, press Enter. Now you can extrude the curve in either direction to a height of 20 millimeters. We can click the mouse, or if you want, you can also type in the value 20 and press Enter. We now have four surfaces that have been created to define the cube but notice that there are no surfaces on the top and the bottom. Also notice when I move in and click or select objects that are overlapping, I get this selection menu that comes up, showing me the objects that are there and asking for more clarification. To create a surface along the bottom, in the Surface menu, I'm going to use a command called Planar Curves. To create this surface, I'll select the original square, and if I need to, I can specify which curve I'm going to be using. When done, press Enter, a surface is created along the bottom. To create the surface along the top, I'm going to use a similar command, except this time I'll use Edge Curves. For this, I can select up to four edges to create a surface in place. With the edges corresponding, I can now join these surfaces together to create a solid object. The Join command allows me to select the individual surfaces and they become joined together along the edges where they meet. Once you have a group of surfaces that enclose a volume completely without any gaps or openings, the object is then defined as a solid. The next step for the die is to create an object that we can use to cut away the members on each face. To do that, I'm going to use a sphere. We can create a sphere by generating an arc. And then creating a surface from that arc by revolving it around an axis.
Rhino knows that it's very common to use these basic geometries and therefore provides a solid menu where you can access these basic geometries. Notice we can create a box just as we did before and we can also create that sphere. I'm going to use center and radius to create a sphere that is four millimeters in diameter and I'll draw it just at the bottom of the box. You could continue to draw out these spheres and it would take you a long time. Or we can take the existing sphere and copy it out in different ways. To do that, I'll use the command copy. These different commands are all going to be found in the transform menu. The first one we can use is copy. We'll follow the prompts, select the object, and then choose a point where you want to copy it from. This is a way for you to be very precise in how you're moving your objects. For this, we'll select the center object snap, turning off all others. Now when we hover over the object, it snaps in precisely to the center. This is where we'll copy the object from, and now we can position this in different places. A standard die's posing faces always add up to seven. With five at the bottom, that would mean that two will be on the opposite side. For that, I can select two of the spheres, and to multi-select, hold down the Shift key so that you can add to the selection. I can then copy these objects from the bottom and go straight up, and to be sure, hold down the Shift key to make sure that it's in line. Now I'm going to position other spheres along the sides. To do that, I'll draw a selection box around the bottom five spheres. Holding the control key, I can deselect the center. Four spheres can now be positioned along one of these side faces. Instead of doing a straight copy, I'm going to use the rotate 2D command. Following the prompt, it asks for the center of rotation. In this case, I want the center of rotation to snap in to one of these endpoints at the corner. I can turn on the object snap to end, and then access that corner precisely. The angle that it will be copied from is along the bottom. The important thing here is that where it says copy in brackets, that you select yes. So just click on that to change it over to yes. And now when you position the objects straight up and click, the objects are now copied instead of just rotated. And when you're done, you can press enter. To do the opposing side, we can select three of these spheres, hold down Control to deselect two of them, and hold down Shift to add to the selection. Now three spheres along the bottom can be rotated, copied to the other face. I'll continue to do this until all the spheres are in place. I can rotate from different viewports to get the spheres where I need them.
Once you have all of the objects where they should be, now we're going to use a command to start cutting away the spheres from the cube. Where you have overlapping solid objects, we can use a set of commands called the Boolean commands. In the solid menu, we can use Boolean union, difference, and some of these. For this, we're going to use the command Boolean difference, and we'll follow the prompts. The poly surface to subtract from is the cube. We'll press enter when we're done. The surfaces to subtract with are the spheres. And I'm just going to select the two along the top so you can see what happens. I'll press Enter. Where these objects overlap, the surfaces have been cut away and parts have been deleted and the remaining parts have been reassembled to create the result that we're looking for. We can continue to do this using that same command, and this time I'll access the icon, Boolean difference, selecting the cube to subtract from, and the remainder of the spheres to subtract with. We can have a look at that to get a better sense of how it looks in the rendered view. Finally, we're going to go in and round out these edges. To do that, we can access a command within the solid menu called Fillet Edge. Fillet Edge will allow you to set a radius, and in this case we're going to use the radius 1, and you can select all of your cube edges at the same time so that the object can be filleted together and press enter. The next thing we're going to do is also fillet the sphere edges, but we'll fillet them to a smaller radius. In this case, we can change the radius to 0.5 millimeters, and then go in and select all of those edges to round them out. Once again, we can render it to see how it looks. You can go back and make adjustments if you see any problems. To get a good handle on this, it's best if you can do it a second time, going through and creating the dice again and positioning the spheres. If you feel like you were able to manage it fairly well the first time and you understand what was going on, then it's also just as easy to copy this out so that you end up with your second die.